I've gotten into 19th century fashion, mostly just because, I mean, obviously it looks a lot different than our fashion today. I mean, like, uh, the silhouette itself is very different, and so I was, like, just really interested in, in what went, like, under creating those, like, silhouettes, and what kept a lot of the, like, the skirts displayed, what, like, gave it that shape, all, like, the things that kind of made it look the way it does, it was just really interesting to me. And so, the first thing I made was a corset, because it was, it was, like, I wouldn't say easy, but it's one of those things everyone knows about 19th century fashion. It's like basically what you think of when you think of uh, Victorian clothing. And so I researched into what eras um, corsets were worn and really what like even a layer under that, which is either a chemise or a shift in drawers. Then moving on to making crinolines, which is those uh, cage-shaped supports that go underneath skirts. And uh, so I went to Home Depot and I bought some steel wire and I made my first cage crinoline. Uh, this, um, it's actually an elliptical-shaped crinoline, which is more oval-shaped um, oval than circular. It displays the skirt uh, differently depending on the era. Uh, closer to the early, um, early um, 1860s, it's a more circular, uh, circular shape, and then towards the end, it's starting to migrate back, because that's sort of the beginning of the later bustle, which more people know about. And then later, I started getting into different fashion from different eras and soon into men's fashion and so I made waistcoats and shirts and pants and cravats and all that all that stuff and I got into uh, learning to starch fabrics so that it's uh, more like structured and I went into like learning about how to make shirts and tailoring and I really uh, tried to get the right shape for each era and I did a lot of research obviously. On top of that I would uh, learn about the different stitching techniques used in the era to make it even more historically accurate, hopefully. Um, I would learn about like how they would even hold how they would hold their needles like the thickness of each fabric for each garment I would learn about um, the different figures of each stitch the running stitches and back stitches and so on a lot of the fabric I get is from Goodwill most of it's actually bed sheets because they're thin and there's a lot of it there's a lot of material on a bed sheet that you can make into lovely dresses. <laughs> uh, there was some machine stitching uh, when the technology would have been available in the 19th century, but a lot of it was hand sewn. A lot of it was uh, just a needle and thread, and it was, it took quite a while, but it really helped you get to know each. Uh, each piece of clothing and how it worked. This was a fun dress to make. It was a lot of work in not much time, but it was fun. She just wants a little blood. No, for her you babies. can't have, have it. For her babies. I don't care. It's for babies. I don't care. Heartless Victorian. Yes. No mosquitoes for me. I love that you have spark burns from working by the firelight. Yeah! Because there was no electricity where you were. <laughs> yeah. And 
I love that you're wearing your Amish hat. Well, yeah, this is the Amish way. Oh, oxygen. Here. 